Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On this channel, we try to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions. Pseudo is in continuation of the SQL 50 Crack SQL interview in 50 question series where we are trying to learn hands on SQL using 50 carefully curated questions covering diverse aspects of SQL. So, we are already done with the select as well as basic joins part. With this video, we will be done with the basic aggregate functions as well. Then, we will be moving to sorting and grouping, advanced select and joins, subqueries, and finally on advanced string functions, regex, and clauses. In this video, we are going to solve this question called Gameplay Analysis Part 4 and try to learn from it. So yeah, let's jump right in. So this is the 22nd question of the series Gameplay Analysis Part 4 and if I look at the companies this question has been asked in, so Adobe and JSN Games. Let's look at what the question has to say. We are given a table called Activity with 4 different columns, Player ID, Device ID, Event Date and Games Played and the data types being Integer for first two, Date and then Integer for the last one as well. The combined columns player ID and event date is the primary key that is combination of columns with unique values of this table. This table shows the activity of players of some games. Each row is a record of a player who logged in and played a number of games possibly zero before logging out on some day using some device. We are asked to write a solution to report the fraction of players that logged in again on the day after the day they first logged in rounded to two decimal places. In other words, we need to count the number of players that logged in for at least two consecutive days starting from their first login date, then divide that number by the total number of players. Okay, let's go through this example and see what do we need in our output. So here we have various players, their different device IDs, their event dates and the number of games they play. So what is the fraction of people who from their first login date logged in at least two consecutive days? If I look at player ID 1, their first login date was 1st March 2016 and the next login was on 2nd March 2016. So player ID 1 logged in for two consecutive days from the first login date. For player ID 2, since there is only one row, obviously we are going to ignore them. And for player ID 3, the first login was on 2nd of March 2016, but the next login was on 3rd of July 2018. So not consecutive days. So one out of three players have logged in two consecutive days at least from their first login date. So one out of three is 0.33 rounded to two decimal places. And that is what we have in our output. Let us switch to Excel and try to develop a logic to solve this question. So here is the table activity and these are the information exactly same as what we have in our question. Then the logic should be, firstly, we are concerned about the first login dates of every player ID. So our step one should be to identify first login dates right okay so once we have the first login dates of every player then our step two should be identify the players that have logged in the next consecutive day from their first login day so identify players and then once we identify the players step three would be find the fraction the first step is find the login dates just like our previous video the way to do that is group by your player id and find the minimum of the event date and that is going to give you the first login dates. So let me switch back and let's do, okay, from this table called activity, if I group by the player ID, group by the player ID and then return the player ID and minimum of the event date, this is going to give me first login date. So let me alias this as FLD, which stands for first login date. And if I go ahead and run this, let's see what do we get in our output. So if I drag it above, so our output is for every player ID, we have the first login days. I'm going to call it T. So let me just make that table here so that it's easier for us to visualize everything at one place. Okay. So this is the table that we have, table T, where for every player ID, we have the first login dates. Now step one is complete. Step two is identify the players which from their first login dates logged in at least one time more in that consecutive date. So for people who followed my previous video, it might look similar that we can just go ahead and add this first login dates here and then perform a where clause. But it is slightly different because here we are also concerned with the next date. We are not only talking about the first login date, the next date from the first login date, there should be a login as well. So those are the players that have logged in at least two times consecutively from the first login date. So to do that, we need to apply a join, but in a smart way. So let's try to do that. 
so let's so we were calling this table as t so let me put this in parentheses and this is our table t now what do we need to do is from so let me just drag it down it's easier for us to view from this table our initial table activity what we are doing is we are left joining because we are trying to identify the players who have logged in the next day as well from their first login day so left join this table the table t that we just created here to this table and this table we are performing a join firstly how are we going to perform a join player id is equal to player id so on let me alias this activity as let's say a on a dot player id is equal to t dot player id okay but we also need to make sure that the login was made on the next day as well so just see how the join is working so activity and table t it says okay let's go row by row player id 1 is equal to player id 1 okay that makes sense this row is not providing us as much information as we want our main concern is whether from this first date there is another row for the second or the next day where the same player id has logged in or not so what can be done think about it apart from comparing the player ids we also do that okay from your event date subtract one day and try to see whether the first login date is present in the table t for that particular player id now some of you might be confused that why we are subtracting one day and not adding one day just think about it here we for a fact know that player id 1 is a person who has logged at least two times from their first login date let's say if i do add one day here so for player id it is going to find a match and when it is adding one day so it will become this this will become 2nd of march 2016 but will that find a match in this no if i go to this row 2nd of march when you add one day it is going to become 3rd of march 2016 will it find a match in this table no so you are not going to find any match that is why if you apply a clever logic that instead of adding one day you subtract one day so here if you subtract one day you end on february of 29 2016 yes you do not have any match in this case but when you subtract one day from 2nd of march that is going to give you the 1st of march 2016 and that is present in this table t similarly you can do the same for this so this is only one row so once so you subtract one day from here this is going to be 24th of june 2017 obviously not here for this first login is 2nd of march 2016 subtract one day 1st of march 2016 not here again this one not here so you see if you perform a join using where player id from activity table is equal to player id from the table t and one day minus the event date column from the activity table is equal to the first login date then you can identify the player ids who actually logged in the, the next day from their first login dates so what i'm doing is now once we identified that we need to subtract one day how can we do that in mysql so simply there is a function called date sub so if i do and date subtract so it will subtract something from which column we are going to subtract the event date column coming from the activity table so a dot event date and then you need to subtract remember in our series in few videos back we learned that just by doing minus one won't be a good way to do always write interval one day so it will subtract one day out of it and not do it mathematically because these are dates so we write interval one day is equal to t dot first login date and let me go ahead and select so let me keep all the columns from the activity table and we are only concerned about the player ids from the table t so if i go back and keep t dot player id let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output let me drag it to the left and above so that we are able to visualize properly okay one is equal to one but one they subtract from this that is not here so there it won't find a match and there is null one is equal to one and one day subtracted from this 
is present in the first login date of the table t so that will be populated one and for everything else if you you cannot find the match so null null and null okay so since now from this we can get the numerator as well as the denominator how just count the number of distinct values in the player id column so this is going to give you one count the number of distinct value from the player id column coming from the activity table that is going to give you the total number of people and that is going to give you the fraction so if i go ahead and do this that instead of count right so count distinct of player id coming from the table so t dot player id divided by count of distinct player id column coming from the activity table so that is what we get let me alias this as fraction but we also need to round this to two decimal places so what do we do is round this entire thing to two decimal places let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output okay so if i drag it above so this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it so if it passes all the test cases or not so this is accepted and this is how we do it now using the same logic we can use window functions as well to do this or we can use multiple subqueries to do this as well try this using the window functions or the subqueries or any other method that you think can solve this question as well let the solution be in the comment section below and i will see you guys in the next video